And the pandemic has not slowed down Central Florida's booming real estate market. Today on Central Florida Spotlight, the president of the Orlando Regional Realtor Association and the latest trends she's seeing across our region. Hi, folks, and welcome to this week's edition of Central Florida Spotlight. Joined now by Natalie Aerosmith, the 2021 president of the Orlando Regional Realtor Association. Thanks for talking with us today. There are some good things out of uh, COVID. People do want to still buy houses, right, Natalie? Absolutely. Yeah, people are still buying and people are still selling during these times. I know it's been a difficult time for many economically, but Natalie, let's talk about real estate. What general trends have you noticed in our real estate market here in Central Florida during this last year? Uh, so what we've been seeing uh, late uh, this year is the lowest uh, inventory that we've seen in 15 years. And it's probably the lowest interest rates I've seen in my 15 years as a realtor. So are there some specific trends that you have seen as a direct, as a direct, so underline the word direct result of this pandemic? Direct. Yeah, people are looking at their homes in a different way. People want to have a home office. People want to have a place to work out. People want a place, even for movie theaters, one of the strangest things I think we've seen lately is people want a dog. They want a pet. So we've started seeing people looking for larger land with fences. That's become a thing lately. So you, you talked about the inventory and when we talk about inventory, think about the houses on the market in a particular region. At this moment, what we continue to hear is that inventory is down. We're in short supply, correct? Absolutely. Right now, we're at about one month of inventory. You know, a seller's market is about three months of inventory. If we were to be out of every home that we sold on the uh, sold on the market, we'd be out of houses in three months. That's a seller's market. Right now, we're at one month. So we're at a shortage, a, a crisis shortage of inventory. What does that mean if I want to sell my house? Does that mean I can ask more money with rates at this uh, historic low and inventories this low? Is that good for me as a seller? Well, I think that what it means is that you can definitely look at a higher price, but you're going to get more buyers. You're going to have multiple offers on your home, uh, which we don't normally see in, uh, say, a six-month market. Let's talk about the prices of homes. There is a wheelhouse for some houses that are more popular than others in terms of people being able to buy. There are plenty of houses, I would guess, in the million-dollar range, $600,000 range, a few more. there. But there is a certain bubble of homes that are difficult to find, correct? Correct. Absolutely. Um, you know, we say what we're seeing is anything under 400,000 uh, is where we are with our one month supply. But um, our million dollar houses, our, our luxury market is a little less. So it's supply and demand. You know, the more supply you have, the less demand you have. And the more less supply you have, the more demand you have. All right. Well, it's interesting. The supply and demand is always something, no matter what you're yeah. talking about, houses or yeah. cars or anything like that. We'll continue with more on the Orlando Regional Realtor Association's president, Natalie Aerosmith, and her organization's findings about who is relocating here to Central Florida despite the pandemic. That and much more after this break. Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight here again with Natalie Aerosmith, the 2021 president of the Orlando Regional Realtor Association. Again, thanks for joining us. So many people have so many questions. Hopefully I'll get to uh, everyone's what they're thinking right now regarding real estate. Um, let's talk about a survey that your organization conducted. It found 75% of out-of-state buyers coming to Central Florida came from the Northeast, far outpacing other regions. That, uh, is that weather related? Is it that we have no state tax? What do you think the reason that northeastern folks are relocating here well i think you just touched on two parts that are very important but i think also they're looking for more land and more space but the sunshine i mean especially right now you can't beat living in the sunshine state what about those historically low interest rates how much influence are they having on home sales here in central florida a tremendous amount. The lower the interest rates, the more buying power a buyer has. So we're seeing that um, ability for buyers to go out and maybe buy something that they couldn't afford with a higher interest rate because their payment would be more. How about this? A, a two-in-one question. Um, will okay. our local housing inventory and interest rates continue to decrease? Will they stay steady during 2021? What is the prognostication? 
<laughs> well, with a thousand people moving into the state of the floor and to the state of Florida per week, I would think that our inventory is probably going to stay low. And with interest rates staying low, people are going to buy. So I think 2021 is going to look the same as we've seen over 2020. What about the housing bubble and prices? You know, we, we lived through that, many of us before. It was a nightmare where home prices went way up and all of a sudden the bottom dropped out. Are there any protections against that? Yeah, I think that we're seeing something a little different in 2021. Um, I, you know, I don't think that where we we are where we were in 2007. I lived through that. Um, but I think that we just have such a low inventory that our prices are increasing. So what are Realtors telling you? Do they not have enough to sell right now? Yes. We, we need inventory. We, we have um, affordable housing crisis right now, and we definitely need inventory. Are people buying sight unseen? Are they in bidding wars? Are we at that point? We are in bidding wars. Every offer that I've personally put in today and yesterday has been in a bidding war. And we are telling our sellers to be prepared, um, ask for highest and best. And we're telling our buyers, be prepared. If you get told by your realtor to submit your highest and best, to submit your highest and your best. It's not a joke. Should people also accompany that offer with a letter? Or, I mean, I've heard that in the past, or is that trite? Does that really make any difference if they feel like they're in a, a bidding war? I think it depends. Um, I think that each situation is different. Um, speaking with your realtor, I think that uh, they can guide you through that process and help you with what the best situation is to try to win that offer. The thing people have to remember, Natalie, is if they sell their house at a good price and they get excited about all these offers they then many will have to turn around and buy something else at yes. that same situation so do they really make any money Absolutely. when they're spending more to buy a house well i think if you're buying high and selling high kind of equals each other um but yeah i don't i don't think that they look at it that way the one thing i also have heard is that people are some of them are staying home and investing in their property and i would think that the dollars people are investing now more than ever are actually helping the value of their home should that day come they want to sell it people are getting their money back absolutely people are spending more time in their homes so they want to invest in their homes and i definitely think that they'll glean back what they put into it what is the the number is there a number one area or is it still schools that that generate that or is it uh, amenities that a community has is it a gated community what are the number one two and three things you think most people are looking for it's really not an answer one can give because all of central florida is hot right now everybody's looking for something different certain people want gated communities certain people want to live out in the middle of the country so you know i just think that we're such a hot market right now there really isn't just one answer to that school zones of course are important because if you're in a virtual school you still are attached to that school zone and, and i know that's been a tried and true thing to make certain that the school district you're in is is one that fits your family's needs correct i think that uh yes you definitely want to pick a school district that fits your family's needs but i think that the school district is probably going to have to look at a lot of things in the near future with virtual schooling and where we go so i think that's going to be a question that the school systems are going to have to think about how important is it for me to fix up my house, to put a new coat of paint on the exterior, to do some curb appeal, or to paint the inside, or change out a bathroom? Are those things important, or just having inventory, having a house on the market and letting someone else do it, is, is that changed at all? Again, I think it depends on the person. We have a lot of people who are looking for move-in ready. Um, we are looking for people who want the house painted or need the updated kitchen. But then we also have the others who just want a house to move into. And they'll take whatever they get at this time. Mm -hmm. uh, inspecting a home, not getting too excited, though. There are things that a realtor can really make sure that a buyer and seller uh, check all the boxes on. Just because you like the way a house looks what's behind the surface is something that a realtor and the inspector and all those things are still so important you can't overlook that 
Yeah, the, the realtor needs to make sure that the buyer has an inspection and hires a certified inspector to inspect the home. And the inspector definitely can go through the home and make sure that they look at all the points in the home, roof, plumbing, AC, uh, electrical, everything that you need to know to make sure that the home is safe and sound and sturdy and or just to let you know what's going on with the house. Inspections are obvious. Appraisals, are they difficult to get at that higher level? Are, are appraisers, are they uh, also adjusting what houses are worth because of the low inventory? No, I don't think so. I think we have enough in place from the recession that our appraisers definitely are following underwriting guidelines that they are appraisal guidelines that they have and staying within those guidelines. Very good. Coming up next, what you need to know as a buyer or seller in the current real estate market. We'll be right back after this. Welcome back to Central Florida Spotlight. Thanks again to Natalie Aerosmith with the Orlando Regional Realtor Association. Natalie, how difficult has it been for realtors and for sellers and buyers to operate through the COVID pandemic and some of those requirements of masks and the safety protocols? Um, you know, at first, I think it was very difficult, but, you know, the realtors adapted and we created, I know a lot of brokerages created policy and really took the consumer safety and the realtor safety um, in mind and developed processes to be able to make us still be able to show houses and help the consumer with a purchase or sales. Yeah, I've seen a lot of open houses and, and when I've actually wandered into them, they typically have like, of course, the masks if you don't have one they even have the booties to go over your shoes and it does feel as though those precautions have been put in place so it does seem like it's still a, a safe environment has has the realtor association had to lay out some ground rules for showing homes we definitely educate and provide different levels of education um, and the CDC rules and things of that nature to our members. Very good. You've explained the real estate market trends you've seen over the past year. What are the one or two things, Natalie, that any home buyer looking for a home right now needs to know or to expect? Hire a realtor first and foremost and go over your plan and then contact a lender and get pre-approved. A buyer must be pre-approved before looking at houses because you're going to need that pre-approval letter and you're going to need to know what you can afford during this time. So that's probably the most important thing. Hire a realtor and then speak with a lender. And now what about the home sellers? What does someone looking to sell their property right now need to know or be aware of even in a seller's market like this? I would say hire a realtor and discuss what your options are. You may need to find a home before you put your house on the market and you need to understand what that looks like. And a realtor can guide you through that transaction. And do you think that with this uh, market the way it is, are people going to have to turn to, to rentals and, and that sort of thing? If there's no house to buy, are they going to have to try to rent an apartment or maybe rent a house? Possibly. Possibly. Mm -hmm. So you've been in business uh, and been doing this for a long time. Have you ever seen the market this hot? Yes. I've been in the business for 15 years. I lived through the recession. I have seen it go up. I've, I've seen all kinds of trends in the market, um, but I've never seen it this crazy uh, with the uh, multiple offers the way it's been going. Multiple offers. Do you always, as the seller, take the highest offer? No, you absolutely look at what's in your best interest as a seller and what you can accept. The highest offer doesn't always win you the bid. Uh, there are a multitude of factors that we look at in an offer to determine what's best for the seller's needs. Some of those things might be move out date, amount of money down, whether it's a cash deal, right? Those types of things. Absolutely. Absolutely. And cash is not always king um, because they may not offer the right price, but it just depends. There's a multitude of factors that go into it. If someone is paying cash, can then the house sell for over the appraised value? Typically, we don't see an appraisal with a cash offer, but we can add an appraisal into a cash offer. Absolutely, you can have that contingency added in. Mm -hmm. Does a realtor have to be telling you the truth that there are multiple offers or can they make that up? Well, the realtor shouldn't lie ever. We abide by a code of ethics, but we also cannot give if the seller instructs the realtor not to tell anybody that it's a multiple offer situation, we do listen to what the seller says. I know, because I know that I've been in that situation. I'm like, is there really 
and so it is good that the code it of ethics. Is the consumer wants, absolutely. All right, well, listen, it was enjoyable talking with you. Thank you so much for chatting with us. Please. Natalie Aerosmith, president of the Orlando Regional Realtor Association. Next, some insight from a well-known financial planner on the major stock market story over these last couple of weeks. Next.